Welcome to Careers Unwrapped, where we delve into real-life career stories from successful people who've been through it all, the ups and the downs. We'll get their raw, honest, actionable advice and be the careers talk they wish they'd had when they started out. As someone who has had a varied career, from soldier to salesman, expedition leader to entrepreneur, he knows firsthand that your career doesn't always lead you where you expect it to. Here's your host, Mark Fawcett. So hello and welcome to another Careers Unwrapped Masterclass episode. Now, masterclasses are short, they're quick, they're focused on very specific topics to give you the skills you need to excel in your career. I'm your host, Mark Fawcett, and today's masterclass topic is storytelling. Now, for this one, I'm really excited to be joined by Peter Hopwood. And Peter, Peter's a lot of things. He's a global conference and awards host. He's a TEDx speaking pitch coach. He's a tech presenter and and much more as well. He's worked with people, businesses and events all around the world. And he's here to share his extensive experience and his expertise with us. So this is about tips and tricks on how to develop and deploy storytelling as an effective to advance in your career. So Peter, welcome to the show. Mark, thank you so much. I'm glad we're doing this. Finally, we managed to do this. I'm excited to hear how this is going to unfold both of our sides, really. It took a bit of time to get this one booked in. I think your work schedule and your travel schedules, but we've managed it right now. So on storytelling, when I talk with career starters about the skills that they really need to develop, I always highlight the critical importance of storytelling. And at first, people wonder what I mean by that. So from your perspective, What is storytelling in a career context and why is it so important? I can really imagine, again, when you say storytelling to young people, they've got these all these different ideas about exactly what that is. And today, when we hear that word, we hear that essentially all the time. We often think of these blockbuster movies of how somebody made their way from rags to riches, making their way up a mountain, Olympic winners, but winning lots of money at the end of the day, all these kind of big stories. But in fact, if we look at what stories, why are stories important? There are so many elements which really help us to communicate better and to connect better. Because at the end of the day, it's all about that connection and that relationship we're building with whoever we're speaking with. So stories can help us be memorable. So I'm not talking about, again, these Hollywood blockbusters. I'm talking about sharing sequences of events or related events that have happened to us or others and then taking us on this kind of journey of emotion and then having a point at the end. So essentially, let's say you're having after this today, Mark, will you meet a friend today maybe or someone in your family? Probably someone in your family. Well, you should meet someone in your family. You're at home, at home unless you live alone now. But anyway, <laughs> you'll meet someone and you might tell them about something that happened today, something that was maybe a little bit different out of the ordinary, something that hit an emotion, right? That, that is a story, right? That's a story of getting people to listen to you and getting people to feel those same emotions and then getting them to think about some kind of an idea. So when we're sharing these simple mini stories with each other, this helps us, again, helps the person listening to be more connected with us. It helps people to listen to us more, certainly in today's world where everything is, there's so many distractions. And it also helps us to really connect with the person who's speaking and move on to an idea. So if we take, let's say, an interview. So this is really essentially where a company, an organization, they're checking you out whether you're the right fit. And you've got to give answers to their questions. So in those answers... Instead of giving simple facts, simple messages, simple one-liner ideas of answering their questions, if we start to put in a story, things that have happened to us, things that involve emotion, things that have kind of stood out, the person listening will think of you as somebody who is actually going to be standing out, also memorable, which you need to be as well. And it also hits their emotions. So when we hit emotions, we remember those better and we can also have more of a connection. So really stories, if we have a kind of storytelling mindset, that's what we're really trying to achieve here. 
getting closer to a storytelling mindset of moments of emotion to help us connect better. And so if I'm starting out on my career and I'm now sold on the importance of storytelling and the emotional aspects of it, what are some hints you could then give me that I can actually take away an action to become a better storyteller? Okay, so first of all, remember our imagination is a wonderful thing, right? So getting people to planting seeds of emotion or planting ideas in people's minds can get people to start thinking about something we want them to think about. And then when actually we give them an answer to that before they've even answered it themselves, that actually creates a connection. Let me give you an example. So for example, right now, if I ask you, Mark, if I ask you to think about a desert island, right? You're on a desert island and you're on that desert island for six months. That might mean I can see a smile on your face. That probably makes you feel good, takes you away from work. What I didn't say is you don't get paid, by the way, although you can't buy anything. You can't even pay for coconuts on that island because no one to take the money. Anyway, you're on a desert island for six months. And on that island for six months, you will be given a chocolate bar, a chocolate bar every day for that six months. Think about that chocolate bar. Don't tell me. I don't need to know. Just think about that chocolate bar, what it's going to taste like, which one it is. You're thinking probably about the wrapper right now. You're thinking about the last time you ate that or took a bite into that chocolate bar, as opposed to maybe a different chocolate bar. I don't know what that is. I'm going to tell you my chocolate bar. My chocolate bar is Kit Kat <laughs> for different reasons. Anyway, the snack of choice. <laughs> Absolutely. So here's the thing. I didn't know where you were going. All I knew that I was taking you somewhere in your imagination. I just asked you to think about that. I didn't ask you what the answer was, but when I said to you, I'm going to tell you now what my chocolate bar is, probably at that point, you were really eager, probably quite keen to hear what the answer is. So essentially, when we plant an idea in somebody's mind, we get them thinking about it, which makes them almost more receptive to share our ideas, right? And can, that could be anything, a question. I could ask you a question. Thinking about climate change today, you can imagine it's a big thing, right? And it, it means a lot of things for a lot of different people. But for me, it kind of means this. And then when I go on to that, again, you're more eager to hear and ready to listen. Almost your ears are kind of up, ready to listen what that answer is. So in storytelling, we can often start by planting an idea, getting people to think about an idea, but not share that idea. And then when we give our opinion or our perspective, people are ready to listen to that. So that I do understand. So the planting a seed of an idea up front and you're engaging people straight away, you're getting their brains turning over. I like that. So that's one of the ideas. Another idea is also thinking about the, the, the idea that our emotions getting there's this, there's this thing called neural coupling. It's fascinating. It's almost like when, I, when we tell a story or we're watching a film, let's say we're watching a Netflix series, we start to get into those characters, right? We start to value those characters. We start to really understand what's going on in their minds and, and how they're feeling. And that's done by setting the scene, right? So we, we start to see how they're feeling, how, they're, how they react with other people. But when we start to see ourselves in those stories, when we start to see ourselves, not necessarily everything about ourselves in those stories, but if we start to see a challenge that we're facing, or we could imagine how that feels, right? Understanding how the, the, that, that feeling would feel if we were in that situation, okay? So once we start putting ourselves into that, situation, there's something kind of strange that, that happens with our brain. Our brain kind of sends off these messages, these neural kind of things, which actually connect us with the person that's talking or the images. In this case, it would be the movie that we're watching. So we kind of feel kind of connected and almost as if sometimes time stops still because we become so engrossed into that. We feel as if it's almost happening to us there and then. We've all had that feeling where we're watching a film, a movie, a scary film, or even a comedy. We're watching a stand-up comedy session where we really can put ourselves into the position of where these stories, these kind of anecdotes, these jokes are taking us because we could feel 
how that would feel in that situation. So yeah, jumping in and making, really feeling the feeling of what it feels like is really important. Going on from that, I would even say, again, another one here. Imagine, okay, you've probably been delayed on a plane, I guess. Most of us have been delayed, undoubtedly, either at the airport before going sometimes, if we're lucky enough to get a message on our phones telling us that it's delayed. But in the olden days, this never happened because we didn't have phones. But imagine you're sitting on the plane and you might have been in this situation, maybe not. But imagine if you haven't, think about this, the feeling it would feel like sitting on that plane and it's already half an hour. You should have left half an hour ago, haven't been informed, and you're wondering what's going to happen next. So that feeling probably is about you're feeling kind of anxious. You're feeling, okay, when am I actually going to get to my destination because I have to start, maybe it's for work, maybe it's for pleasure, maybe there's somebody waiting for you, maybe your parking will run out very quickly, so it's going to be a, a hefty fine at the end of it. So that feeling of being on that plane at that moment, you can imagine what that feels like. So sharing that, really going into that and getting us to feel what the feeling is like, even if we haven't been there before, is really an important part of getting your listener to come into that story with you. And that's essentially what we're trying to do, getting our listeners to connect with us and become part of, see themselves either because of the challenges that are being faced in that story or they're actually in the story because they've experienced it before. I think that is all so true because people's thoughts often at the beginning when they start thinking about storytelling is more about, okay, how to structure words I'm going to say so that they make sense and they're better than if I didn't structure them. But so much of what you're drawing out here is the need to create emotion, how much stronger it can be if you're planting the seeds of an idea. Also about getting the listener feeling that they're part of the situation, that they are part of the story. All of these things can create that strong connection. I think that it doesn't really matter whether you're going into an interview situation, whether you're developing as a leader, whether you're trying to sell something, whether you're explaining something, you could be a scientist, you could be a politician, you could be a salesperson. All of these require you to tell a story. And the better you can tell a story, the more you can engage your audiences. And I think anybody listening can just take little bits from that and say, actually, I could try and do that better. And perhaps, Peter, leave us with one final practical hint, something that we can go away and practice tomorrow to become a better storyteller. I would say think about how you're going to start to get people to listen to you, to that story, okay? First of all, again, think about the emotion. It's an emotional connection. That's what we're trying to do, okay? Think about the point. So think about why you're telling this story. What is it you're sharing? Again, if it's just a chat and if it's just uh, over coffee, sharing a small anecdote about something that happened, there's not really a lot of point for that other than maybe a laugh gets us connecting and, and it's a nice story to hear. It might, again, it might be funny and it's a good anecdote. But in business careers, we really have to always think about the point of why we're telling a story or why we're sharing this moments of emotion. So whether it is to give you more credibility, or it may be because you want to show your perseverance, or you might want to show how you got through something that was actually quite difficult at first, but in fact, you got through it, you overcome a, a big challenge or even lots of small challenges to get you where you are today. Again, the impact might not be big success, but it might just be you're on that road to success, all right? So you're still learning on this journey. So an impact doesn't have to be the finished, final, polished idea, but it can just be on that journey. So again, think about the idea, the reason why you're telling it, and also how you're going to start. So starting a story, again, by saying, let me tell you a story. For most of us, when we hear that, most of us kind of go into story mode. And for some of us, our story mode might be a kind of fable myth mode where we don't seem to maybe believe everything, right? So I would say avoid any of that and just go in and pick a moment in time that people can start to put themselves in. For example, so let me just take you back to a moment a couple of years ago when I was 
got on a plane and things didn't go so well. Let me explain. So all just that couple of a few phrases already as a listener, you're already like, okay, well, what is this? Because in fact, it's unpredictable. So being unpredictable is actually a very, very good thing. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what's coming next. And this is a big part of what stories are. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what's going to come next in these events. Because if we did, probably we'd tune out. A book, we know. A novel, if we've read it once, very rarely do we read it again. Watching films, often, most probably, we don't watch a film again. Some people do because they like to relive those feelings again. But generally, being unpredictable, not giving everything away, and taking people on this journey through a good hook at the beginning can really help. I think that's several really good pieces for us to end on there, being unpredictable, but also making sure you are clear in your mind on what you want the person you're telling story to to think or do differently beforehand, because that gives you the aim of the story and can help shape the way you tell it and the emotions you bring in. So Peter, I think that's been a fantastic masterclass. I like to think I'm quite good at storytelling, but I've certainly taken pieces out of that to use and practice and refresh myself. And for those who want to develop their own storytelling skills, when you've listened to this, jot down one or two notes and just go and practice them. Just go and do it. Best way to get going. Peter, thank you so much for joining us on the Careers Unwrapped Masterclass today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been intriguing. And I've actually learned quite a lot from you as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Peter. Thanks so much. This podcast is sponsored by We Are Futures. To find out more about We Are Futures and how we can introduce your brand, business or organisation to the mass markets of tomorrow, visit www.wearefutures.com. Make sure to search for Careers Unwrapped in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts or anywhere else podcasts are found. Remember to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at We Are Futures, thanks for listening.